this Congress who still refuses to raise the minimum wage, I say this. If you truly believe you could work full time and support a family on less than $15,000 a year, try it. What we want are more people to enter into the workforce. We don't want to make it more expensive for, for, employees, for employers to be able to hire people. This year on January 1st, 2015, the minimum wage was raised to 915. In 2016, it will be raised to 960. Then finally, 1010 on January 1st, 2017. With the minimum wage debate won in Connecticut, we wanted to find the effects of the raise. We started by asking Governor Daniel Malloy why he wanted the raise in the first place. People need uh, 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 need a raise. Uh, we need pressure on the lower level salaries to raise those salaries. They weren't uh, they weren't being raised uh, uh, without it, uh, without some pressure. One question that is often brought up is if there are any benefits in this minimum wage raise. We reached out to Lieutenant Governor Wyman for answers. You know, it's about seventy to ninety thousand people that will have to see their income going up. Uh, basically, what it can do is can pull people out of poverty. However, Representative Rutigliano thought differently about who was benefiting. The statistics that I'm familiar with f are different than the, the, the other side statistics. We, we believe that upwards of 80% of the people receiving the minimum wage are e under the age of 24, are, are second jobbers, meaning they have another job, or they're second workers in the household, where they live in a household. Predominantly, the minimum wage workers live in a household well above the poverty line. What is important to note is that the, nationally, the majority of minimum wage earners are under the age of 30, with 30.9% of them being between the ages of 16 and 19. Whether they are teenagers or not, a report by Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy showed that average minimum wage earners account for 35% of their family's income. One of the biggest arguments and fears about the raise in the minimum wage was that it would lead to job losses. What they'll do, as a matter of fact, is they'll hire less people. I've heard from many, many people, and a couple of towns, too, who would hire some help, teens for summer help and stuff like that. If we got to pay the minimum wage, instead of hiring five people for summer jobs, we'll only hire four. That's all we can afford to do. Just that lack of hiring, right? It's sort of reorganizing how your company works. So I'm not going to go in tomorrow and say, okay, you raise the minimum wage, you kids are out of a job, you got to go. What happens is, is that you try to figure out how to combine jobs or find a different way. But the companies that can afford the raise in the minimum wage the most are the ones that can afford the technology to automate. So McDonald's has already got a machine out there that does the French fries, and they, they'll just use less people. So. However, Governor Malloy and Lieutenant Governor Wyman had a different take on this issue. Um, since we started to increase the minimum wage, we have not seen job losses. We have not saw, seen people uh, leaving their jobs or firing their jobs. Um, in fact, we, of course, now are seeing increases in jobs. No uh, truly comparable data that indicates that uh, it leads to lessening of hours uh, or to layoffs. Um, in fact, uh, just the opposite. The facts tend to agree with Lieutenant Governor Nancy Wyman. Connecticut has not lost jobs and, in fact, added 1,200 new jobs in May 2015. However, Connecticut is performing at a sluggish rate compared to 38 other states within this nation. The sluggish job growth tends to support the Republican argument. Due to the raise in the minimum wage, it is conceivable that the rate of job growth has slowed, though jobs are still being created. The final clashing point in the minimum wage debate is whether the minimum wage will harm Connecticut's economy. Lieutenant Governor Nancy Wyman had this to say. These minimum workers will put that money back in as we talked about again, and they'll put it back into the economy, which helps go and buy in stores, where a lot of people of minimum wage work right now. According to Business Insider, Connecticut's economy was ranked seventh overall out of all 50 states. And in a report by J.P. Morgan Chase, Connecticut's GDP is scheduled to grow at a 3.2% increase from 2014 to 2015. Despite that, there has been a dispute on the true statistics on Connecticut's economy. 
The ALEC ranked Connecticut 45th in economic performance and 47th in economic outlook for 2015. Representative Ritigliano had a different thought on how Connecticut's economy would be affected, more specifically the cost of goods. It raises the cost for everyone, including the worker that just got to raise the minimum wage. Everything that they buy or use will become more expensive, no doubt about it. The Consumer Price Index did indeed increase about 1.2% from 2014 to 2015. However, this is actually a marginal increase compared to other years of Connecticut's CPI history. With the first raise happening last year, in January 2014, it is difficult to assess the pros and cons of raising Connecticut's minimum wage. Economically, we haven't seen much of an impact due to raising the minimum wage, and a majority of Connecticut residents aren't directly affected by the raise this year. But for those that are directly affected, whether they are small business employers, minimum wage earners, or big corporations, this issue is one of significance. Oh, <laughs> no.